a live performance from our guest Kelly Joe Phelps coming from the Northwest. He's got a an album brand new on Ryko Disc. It's called Roll Away the Stone. We'll be saying hello to Kelly Joe Phelps momentarily. First one from the studio. It's Morning Becomes Eclectic on KCRW. <laughs> Out across the worn out lane Early one morning, yeah Oh, as I look out across the worn out lane Just both memories and yet you can carry me shout just both memories, boy, you can hear me shout, I won't roll, I won't roll away the stone show. Hey, hey, hey. See that gate down yonder road? You don't know which one will I find. Get down yonder road Which one will I follow mm, No, no, loose my shack Come on and loose my shack Oh, shall Boy, I wanna roll up I wanna roll through Yeah, I wanna roll Yeah, I wanna roll My way to stone Yeah, I want to roll out of the west You don't do a step of slumber, come on Come on, leave my eyes, I want to go, yeah Do a step of slumber, come on yeah, I wanna go away, yeah Yeah, I wanna go Yeah, I 
Kelly Joe Phelps in live performance on KCRW's Morning Becomes Eclectic, Roll Away the Stone, track that uh, comes from the new album on Ryko Disc of the same name, Roll Away the Stone. Kelly Joe Phelps appearing at McCabe's Guitar Shop in Santa Monica tonight. And uh, it's good to see you. You know, it's been, uh, it's been some time now since we, since we last saw you here at the station. I think this is like your third or fourth time down here, is it? I think it's the third time. Okay. I mean, it has been a while. I, I couldn't remember on the way down. It's been a couple of years, maybe. Yeah, last time I talked to you, uh, things were on a roll <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, to p- pardon the pun uh, to get you a, a record situation. You were like signed to I thought American Recordings, right? Yeah, I was signed to them for a while. Uh, and Rick Rubin was going to make a record with you. Yeah, he was, and we went through the whole process, and I did sign with them, and had a few conversations with Rick about how to make the record and all of that. And in fact. Uh, the record Roll Away the Stone was the record that was to come out on American mm. uh, recorded the way that Rick suggested I record it and the whole ball of wax there but you know they went through uh, some sort of reorganization at the end of uh, what year is this now 97 <laughs> yeah. at the end of 96 I guess it was and uh, or the beginning of 97 and I had to let a bunch of people go uh, one of which was me but they they sent me uh packing with a with a record in my duffel bag so it came out okay you know after it was all said and done and also uh it wouldn't have been the record it is had i not had that connection with them for whatever time it was so <clears throat> you know I, I think uh aside from a bunch of sleepless nights and and weird things about being uh sort of in and out of record labels it came out good for me because it 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 forced me to uh, concentrate on some things that reinforced um, ideas that I had about what I was trying to say musically. And then when it was all said and done, it wouldn't have come out the way it did had I not gone through that. Can you can you get a little specific? I mean, when, when you were going to make the record for American, Rick Rubin suggested that it would be just you and guitar, mm-hmm. keep it simple, mm-hmm. keep it in your kitchen. keep. Yeah, the, all those ideas uh, were his. And, I, you know, when I signed up, with them, I wasn't sure what was going to happen, uh, and I was glad to hear him say those things. But yeah, it was uh, him and Troy and and Mark. They they all uh, were of the mind that I should, uh, because I I improvise pretty much what I do. Uh, that it was going to be imperative to not sit in the studio and and worry about the clock and the money going out and all of that, and then give me the uh, chance to record at three in the morning or three in the afternoon or you know, all day or no day, set up the gear and, you know, I would set it up sometimes and creativity would not show up. And I just, you know, turn everything off and go have a sandwich and things. So it worked out really good that way. Mm. Mm. Well, it's been a solo thing for you for some time. Mm -hmm. Um, And keeping it at that essence of the music seems paramount in making it work, certainly at this point. Yeah. Was there ever any dialogue about hey let's bring in the band let's back it up with some drums and yeah yeah I had those uh, those conversations mostly I had with uh, Dave Alvin um, I was talking to him about producing the record and he had a lot of uh, good ideas you know about that and we tossed around a whole bunch of thoughts about that using other instruments and song selection and things uh, which was also critical in the development of Roll Away the Stone. Uh, I had to go through those ideas as well th- and, and then uh, come out the other side thinking, you know, I, I think there is at least one more record in me solo where there's musical you know, musical items that I want on there that I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, a lot of that had to do with the fact that it had been three years between records and uh, certain things had developed for me and I wanted to get them on record and um you know to bring in other musicians it 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 started seeming to me like um it was going to take those chances away from me to just let the music breathe now um you know i i, I have worked solo all this time and so there's a good chance that i have actually no idea about how good it would be to play with other, other musicians you know but just trying to operate on on what i'm thinking you know uh, I decided to do at least one more solo record. Mm-hmm. Before we head into the next tune, I want to set up the, the scene here in the studio. Uh, for those that uh, aren't able to watch this on our 
premiere webcast here this morning. <laughs> We're actually uh, broadcasting this uh, this performance uh, in real time on the internet at our website, kcrw.org. Not only the audio signal, but also a visual signal. So now you can actually, using your real audio player, if it's 4.0 or 5.0, you can actually just uh, get a nice little video uh, mm. performance from Kelly Joe Phelps. No kidding. Guess. Yeah, yeah. You are you are on camera. Wow. <laughs> Should have ran a razor blade across <laughs> my visage. But um, so this, the guitar you're using is is a a regular acoustic guitar. Mm-hmm. And have you modified it in any way? Because you've got it, you know, flat down yeah. on your lap as yeah. if it's a, a a lap steel. Yeah. The only modification was in raising the strings up. Uh, much higher. It's it's uh, height-wise set up like a dobro would be, you know, or a lap steel or a pedal steel or something. You can't fret this guitar at all with your left hand. Mm. Um, that's the only modification, though. Otherwise, it's an old guitar. Okay, so that will allow the the frets to to stay out of the way. Yeah, and then the slide bar, you know, operates as a movable fret across the top. So. Okay. Kelly Joe Phelps is with us. It's Morning Becomes Eclectic on KCRW. There's a show tonight at 8 o'clock at McCabe's Guitar Shop in Santa Monica, and there's a new album on Ryko Disc. It's called Roll Away the Stone. We're hearing a live performance in studio. Another tear for my broken family Have a glass of whiskey with another friend Well, that has no where to be Get my feet on the road, I feel much better there Gonna stop trying someday, some year Then and when I told her I loved I said goodbye, I grabbed my suitcase Get in my kid, find another place to call home for a while If I get to get you, I don't know why, I don't know why Yeah, I keep on wondering, yeah, I keep on wondering This is the one where God, I'm losing my mind But I wake up to another damn day I wish I was magic I'd make it go away long But last night in a dream I saw her again I tried to scream No, I couldn't Guess I'll keep on Yeah. 
With my knees I wobble and my back keeps going out I try to sing like a bird but all I can do is mumble and shout Maybe I'll get it right Maybe I stay up most of the night I don't want to see her come at me again Reaching for my neck We're hearing a live in-studio performance from Kelly Joe Phelps. It's Morning Becomes Eclectic on 89.9 KCRW. I'm Chris Doritas. Kelly Joe Phelps, coming from the uh, Portland area. Aren't you still living in Portland? Yeah. And surrounds? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, did you grow up in that area? I grew up uh, a couple hours north uh, towards Seattle, a little town um, east, east, south, and east of Seattle toward uh, Mount Rainier. Mm. Right there. Well, when you, your father was a musician, Mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah, he's the one that got me started doing all this. So, what was his instrument? He played guitar and piano and harmonica, is what he did. And he had, uh, he was an ear musician, and he just learned, you know, at home from his dad a little bit and his brothers and things. So, he he played boogie-woogie piano stuff, and then uh, on guitar he would play old country western tunes. Hmm. And then on harmonica, he'd play like Over the Waves and stuff, just old funny songs, you know. But uh, he what? real instrumental, though, in getting me going on it, you know. Was he a professional musician? Um, no, not really. I think uh, in his younger days, he had done some radio shows and whatnot, local radio shows, you know. They used to have all those great sponsored things. And uh, evidently had a band with his brothers, that, and they would do some stuff. But that was the extent of it. Uh, he just played at home all the time. I mean, almost every day he would play one or another, you know one or the other of those instruments. Hmm. So you you were pretty young then, I guess, when you picked up music. Yeah, I think I started about eight years old. I started playing piano then, and uh, and I was ten or eleven. I started playing drums. You know, played in school band all the way through high school, all marching right. band, concert band, the and timpanis all that. and mm-hmm. the whole yeah, yeah, <laughs> all of that. Can you imagine? And I was uh, 12 years old uh, when I started playing guitar. Hmm. Now, didn't you pick up the bass at some point? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did that uh, early 20s. Uh, uh, late teens, I got interested in jazz music and uh, started learning about that, how to improvise and the science involved with that. And uh, and then, uh, you know, 21, 22, I had moved to Portland by then and started meeting a lot of jazz musicians. And there was a very healthy jazz community at that point in Portland, but it was very uh, centered. The focus of it was centered on bebop and straight-ahead jazz, Um, and there wasn't a lot of work for guitar players. There was a lot of work for bass, drums, horn players, so I had the option, I guess, of learning trumpet or learning bass. Uh, Because I knew how to play guitar, I started uh, playing bass at that point uh, and just applied all the jazz you know, knowledge and whatnot. I was I was uh, privy to there to the bass, and then started gigging around as a jazz bass player. And I did that almost exclusively for you know eight years, maybe. But there was something that was leaving you, uh, leaving you cold, or leaving you wanting more. Yeah. See, I I, um, I was fascinated mostly by music that was by and large spontaneous. Uh, Anything that you could make up on the spot, I thought, was the coolest thing going, you know. Uh, because of that, after a while, I got tired of doing the bebop thing and, and working with that and just wanted to play free music. Uh, and <clears throat> the last couple of years of, of my jazz life, 
uh, I was just playing free music. You know, we I was playing in groups of one sort or another, and we would just show up, and someone would squeak a note out of a horn, and then somebody would splat another note out of something else, and three hours later the gig was done. You know, <laughs> uh, which was you know unbelievably thrilling. But after a while, it got you know unbelieve unbelievably self serving to me personally it just stopped feeding me you know uh, and then I kind of waffled around a little bit there figuring out what the heck I was going to do because uh, among other things I felt like the joy of playing music was disappearing for me and started thinking about those years when I was a kid sitting up in my bedroom you know for hour, hours on end playing the guitar and how much fun that was uh, so there I was in need of something, <clears throat> and at that uh, at that moment, I got a hold of a Fred McDowell record, uh, and I'm glad it was him because uh, when I put that on, I, I still had the ears of a free musician, and what I was hearing on that record was a free musician that was singing, that had that you know very earthbound anchor that the country blues has, and uh, so I started rethinking lots of things and started on the path that has led me here. So during that whole period when you were um, playing bass and bebop bands and things, were you singing at all? Mm-mm. No. Had, had you been singing up to that point? No. No, that's the newest part of... Yeah, because when I first heard you, it was on Lead Me On, the Burnside record that came out, what, four or five years ago now? Yeah, three years, I think. A little over three years ago. Is that, is that when it was? Yeah. Okay. And Long three That's years. when we met for the first time, because mm-hmm. I'd called yeah, the label, right. and we, we got you down here and stuff. And yeah. um, I remember that album really didn't treat your vocals the way, you know, the way we're hearing them today, for example, or the way you, you hear them on this new Riker disc release. The the guitar was really front and center. Right. And your vocal, while it was uh, present, was sort of, you know, part of the background. or, or not, not, not No, I know what you mean, yeah. wasn't as present as, you know, and I, I wonder if that's in part due to building confidence as a singer. or. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, in the first record, you know, I just... Um, the only thing I was doing leading up to that record was uh, playing gigs in little coffee houses and cafes around Portland. Uh, and uh, the folks at Burnside Records, you know, decided they wanted to try a record, you know, put put a record together. And I had not done that before or anything, you know. So we set up studio time, and I just went in and, and sang and played, and, and they pretty much, you know, did whatever they thought was needed for the record. Maybe they were operating on that idea, you know, that... That the guy's you know a good guitar player and and not such a great singer so let's mix that stuff back or something I don't know but um, but I have gotten more comfortable with it certainly you know in the time between that record and this one and enjoy it a lot more I'm less self conscious about it and uh, I get lost in it easier and, and hopefully I got that on the new record you know because I certainly wanted to you know wanted that to stand out and people because that you know I think in the end that's really what, what what people are identifying with I would think you know yeah the the connection the human connection well it's uh, I think it's a tandem effect I mean the guitar work is just is is, is you know connecting as well oh yeah. good good <laughs> <laughs> well thank you <laughs> we've got Kelly Joe Phelps in the studio it's morning becomes eclectic on eighty nine point nine KCRW Stay on with your wife and your family. 
Side.